welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for coming. If you're not, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I created this gargoyle dresser. Lots of bloopers for this video. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, if you feel like you want to laugh a bit, make sure you stay all the way to the end. This challenge is hosted by Lemons to Lemonade. Check out the playlist in the comments below. Lots of cool pieces in this challenge. When I was invited to join this challenge, I thought to myself, gotta be spooky, because I love spooky. Melanie Mel from The Colored Caboose gave me this piece of furniture. She didn't want to work on it, so she passed it on to me. If you guys haven't seen Mel's channel, you gotta check it out, The Colored Caboose. This piece was screaming gargoyle. I had an idea in my mind on how it would look, didn't know how I was gonna do it. Today, I'm gonna walk you through it. This gargoyle right here was my inspiration for this piece. To make our mold, we're gonna use Amazing Mold Maker. We're gonna take out two equal portions of each part. We're gonna mix those together really, really well until it's a nice light yellow, a uniformed color. I'm gonna flatten that putty out, make it into like a pancake kind of thing, like making a tortilla. We're gonna do that and get it on there. says you have about two minutes work time for the mixing and then it's about five minutes till it hardens up so you got to work kind of fast on a large thing like this definitely stretching it thin and I did not have another box of this so I'm really just trying to make it go as far as it can and put any holes that I make back together I wish I would have had a little bit more to go up and over those ears a bit more, but I didn't, so we're gonna do what we can do. Waited for that to dry, and then I gently pulled the mold from the gargoyle. I was really happy it all held together. Can't really tell how much detail I'm gonna get, but so far, so good. I ran myself over to Home Depot and picked up a bucket of Plaster of Paris. So now we're gonna mix it till we can pour it into our mold. I'm gonna give it a light spritz and I'm gonna mix three cups Plaster of Paris to three cups of water. Stir that up real well so we can get rid of any lumps or clumps. I'm just gonna put my sander on the bottom of the bucket and try to vibrate out any bubbles that are in there. Put my mold in a little box filled with polyfill in hopes that I wouldn't smush his face. I'm gonna pour that stuff in there and then I'm gonna give it another vibrate with the sander. Now we're gonna pull out our IOD mold wings and feathers, and we're gonna pull out our air dry clay. We're gonna sprinkle our mold lightly with cornstarch, and we're gonna to start to make a lot of wings. We need a ton of them. IOD molds are very deep and have a ton of detail. So after you've made your mold and you've wiped it clean on the back, you can go ahead and just pull it out while they're still wet. While I was making many, many molds, this guy was drying. Now it's time to pull off the mold and see what we have. Check him out. He looks great. A little bit of cleanup needs to be done around the back of his head, but all in all, he's good. Now for the dilemma of how to hook him on here. This is plaster of Paris, guys. It kind of weighs a lot. I'm a little bit worried about that. So 
I decided why not drill right through him and just screw him right onto the dresser. So we're not doing Frankenstein. We don't want that bolt to show. So while this is still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and just carve it back so my bolt will sink in and be hidden. Lucky for me, my bolt was long enough. I added a washer and a nut, and what do you know? It works. Now we can grab his chin, and there you go. That's how you open your top drawer. Now it's time to place our feathers. I'm gonna use tight bond wood glue, number three, because it is white and dries clear, and it dries pretty darn fast. We made 24 molds in all, a lot of molds. So we've got a lot of placement to do. You wanna cover all your edges with that wood glue. That way you can make sure that you have a nice, good, secure fit to your piece. Just a little tip for you. When you're making a ton of molds like I am now, they have a tendency to start drying on you before you're ready to use them. So if you take those guys and you place them in the freezer, They'll harden up while they're in there, but when you pull them back out, they thaw and they're still flexible and bendable. Did a couple dry placements to see how the feathers would look the best. And I found that if I started at the bottom and worked my way up, it looked more realistic that way. That way the feathers at the top are sitting on top of the bottom, just like they would be, right? Now that we have them on there, that's great, but our drawer still needs to open. So we're gonna go ahead and just take a straight blade and cut right through them. I'm gonna use my fingers to smush down the edges so they don't catch and pull up. And there we go. piece was missing the poles that came with it anyways but even if it wasn't I didn't like those little round knobbies so I reached into my stash and pulled out this guy that I bought I don't even know when I think at Hobby Lobby now that we have everything in place it's time to start painting we're gonna pull out our DIY little black dress and letter press gray I'm gonna put them both down on a plate I'm gonna use my Klingon F40 and I'm just going to kind of dip into one, dip into another, and get this painted. And I'm really not thinking about anything strategic at this time. Just mixing up the colors, getting both shades. When your molds are wet still, you don't want to be super aggressive because you can smush out the details. I want to get in those details, make sure I have everything pretty thoroughly painted, but I don't want to smush out the folds and all the goodness on them. My first coat on with my paintbrush, now I'm back in with a thousand grit steel wool that's what it's called steel wool and i'm just dabbing it on there to get a little bit of texture in there The little piece of steel wool that I'm using is causing its own texture, its own pattern, so that when I do the rest of the paint job, we're gonna have something there, a little bit of building to work with.
So here's what we have with just the gray and the black. It's already looking pretty cool, don't you think? You guys gotta tell me what you guys think of this project. It's a nice close up to show you how you can see what the still wool did, how it left its little imprint on there. And look at him, doesn't he just look great? I love, look at all the depth. Ah, he's cool, huh? Very hopeful to make this piece look as close to my gargoyle that I had, my inspiration gargoyle, as I can. I really wanted to put some front legs on him, but there was just no way to do it. I tried a few different ways. I thought, hmm, I could do um, paper mache. I could do lots of things, but in the end, I decided that I was gonna ruin it if I tried to do more. So now we're just gonna go in with our prairie gray and start highlighting the things that we can highlight. Let's give these wings a little bit more, mm, make them stand out a bit more and see how cool we can make this. Now I'm gonna pull out this brush and I'm gonna dry brush on some sandy blonde, just the lightest, lightest amount. Try to just, again, highlight, hit those high spaces and make even more definition and depth come out. This project, I decided I wanted to use wax. I can do more with wax. I can add more depth with wax. I can highlight more with wax. So we're gonna go in with just a little tiny brush because we've got a lot of little details to get our clear wax in. Forget, if you wanna see some bloopers, you gotta hang out to the end. That I have a coat of clear on there. I'm gonna go back in with my dark and black waxes. I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth again, mixing them up and covering up these big spaces here. You can also use this little brush here to go into those deep spaces. That way it'll highlight the high spaces and make his features stand out more. I'm gonna wait just a bit for that DIY wax to dry. It dries so fast. I'm so grateful and thankful for that. And we're gonna buff it up. Now I'm gonna pull out this stuff. This is a gilding wax that I bought, I don't know, forever ago. And it's got like a metallic kind of a silvery color on it. So let's highlight some more. I think it's really cool how a little bit of highlighting can do so much. We can just hit the eyebrows, like the brow line. We can hit those lips a little bit, hit the tips of his ears a little bit. And it just really makes those things on him pop. They just stand out more. So hitting those wings on just the tips too, is just gonna give us a little bit more depth and make those wings pop. All right, so now that we did that, we added all that dark wax and I just don't like the body. It's too much, it's too blotchy, it's just not good. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out our wax. We're gonna add in some little black dress and we're gonna make a super dark black wax. One that sticks, one that doesn't wipe away, one that just, yeah, hopefully covers up our mm, not so cool. I just freshly applied all that wax before. I didn't want to go straight out this with paint. You can paint over wax, believe it or not. Yes, you can, but maybe not this fresh. I would wait a bit before I did it. So doing what I'm doing now, I'm kind of just breaking the rules a bit, but it works super well. All right, that is Better. You can still see a little bit of depth from the paint below, but it covered it up much more. Now there's a lot more definition between the body of the piece and the wings and his head and the drawer pulls. 
And again, my most favorite part, you can grab this guy's head and use him to pull out the top drawer. I think that was so cool because I was like kind of stressing about where I was going to put the pool. How was I going to make the pools blend into the wings so it wasn't distracting and still look cool? And his head, yay, <laughs> that worked out really, really well. watching if you haven't hit that subscribe button don't forget to do it now you guys are awesome and remember only you can make it happen i'll see you next time thank you guys that's cute i know what are you doing buddy what are you doing Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for coming. This challenge is hosted by Lemons to Lemonade. Check out the playlist in the uh, check out the playlist in the comments below. All right. You want to know what I think you should do? No. Yes. Lemons. Where are you going? Oh, look, right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. I did this for a challenge. It's hosted by. I did this for a challenge. It's hosted. Who the fuck? This challenge is hosted by Lemons to Lemonade. Um, check out the playlist in the comments below. I was trying to figure out how to get it legs in the front. Came up with a couple of different ideas. Some screen. How do you hook it on? How do you make the drawer work? If I paper mache this and painted it to match. Just couldn't figure out how to do it, so no legs. All of these wings here are made by IOD. These are molds that I sell at my store. You can find them on my website if you want them. Thanks for hanging out, guys. You guys are awesome. Wish me luck on winning this fall challenge. Put some comments below. Give me lots of views, lots of shares, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you in the next video. Oh, wow.